Hi guys, so uh, I wanted to be able to do a quick video blog today to be able to share some health tips. Um, I typically would uh, prefer to do written word blogs, but what uh, I found uh, is that time is flying and uh, like many of you, I find I never have enough hours in my day to get all the things I want to get done, done. And that creates a lot of stress in our lives. So I've been seeing a lot of patients who are managing high levels of stress and they're asking for treatment for that. And, I'm, and one of the wonderful things is that acupuncture is so good at helping to diminish stress. Um, it releases endorphins, feel good hormones that can help you feel more relaxed afterwards. And it really is kind of like a re-educating of the nervous system that this is just, that, that you don't have to be stressed and tense. Um, so with Chinese medicine, we think of different systems as being more than the physical organs in our body. So for example, the liver, and we put a capital L for liver in Chinese medicine to denote that it's different than the physical liver in our bodies. Uh, is like a military general. It likes routine and order and structure. And right now, times of uncertainty, there isn't a lot of that uh, for many people. Um, so the liver, when it gets agitated, uh, people may find that they're short of temper, they're frustrated, they're irritable. They may also find that their sleep-wake cycles are disrupted. They may find that their menstrual cycles are, are disrupted. Uh, they may feel uh, tension in the jaw, uh, pain, TMJ syndrome, upper trap, shoulders. Um, they may have digestive issues as well. So there are a variety of symptoms that come along with this, and many of these are common with stress uh, issues. So um, some of the things that you can do. So first of all, creating some structure in your day. So having regular sleep times and regular wake times can be very helpful to create, first of all, more sleep for you. So if you can schedule in that you're going to have it, like ideally eight hours of sleep time, then uh, you're more likely to get eight hours of sleep time than if you just go to bed when you feel that you're done watching Netflix or uh, reading your book and then waking up when you need to because your alarm's going off and you're still tired. Um, so creating regular sleep and wake times is really helpful and sustaining that as best as you can on the weekends too. Regular meal times is another thing that creates some structure in your day. It doesn't have to mean breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but basically the structure of where you have a meal or a snack at fairly regular times um, so that your body knows that its basic needs of sleep and nutrition are met. Um, so uh, the, I mentioned tension in the jaw, tension in the shoulders. Uh, one of the things that can really happen when we get stressed is we get really cramped up like this. Our shoulders get up close to our ears. We're all aware of social distancing now, two meters, six feet away. Um, think of that as the social distancing. I used to say um, pre-pandemic that uh, think of these like the two kids in class, one kid here, one kid here that you don't want sitting next to each other in class. So these are the kids that if you put them on opposite sides of the class, the class is okay. They're not disruptive. You sit them beside each other and then there's trouble. So keep these two socially distanced from each other. Uh, and what that happens when you do that is you might also open up through the chest. You might Your posture may improve as you uh, think about separating these two. And then in doing so, you can breathe more deeply because breath, is another way to manage stress. So uh, Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, meditation, the foundation of, of these practices is essentially breath, deep, slow breath. And when we breathe deeply and slowly, we're more likely to cultivate a calm nervous system reaction rather than a agitated and stressed out nervous system reaction. And it's important to cultivate that, practice that on a regular basis, because it's really hard to bring up when we're super stressed. It's easier to bring up if we've practiced it. And then when high, level, high times of stress come in, we have a foundation that we can work with. In terms of acupressure points that you can use, there's an acupressure point on the forehead here. Many of you know it. Many of you have asked me for it. That's why I used to call it the aren't you going to do that point point or the number one request point. I now call it the unicorn point. So this unicorn point here 
is a really good one called Yin Tang for calming the nervous system. You can do a little bit of massage on it, light pressure, circular movement, maybe even just like gently stroking that point there. If you see somebody who looks like that point is really agitated, maybe you want to give them an easier time. They might have been really stressed out and working that point hard. Um, so that is a good point for calming the nervous system. There's one on the top of the head here as well called Bai Hui. Uh, 100 meeting point is a translation. So if you use the tip of your ears and you create a, I would use both hands, but I've got the phone in one hand, uh, create a headband here and you're gonna find a point that's a little tender on the top of the head. This is also a good point for calming the nervous system. Um, the uh, other things that you can do is look at your nutrition. 